so much technology, so much money, so many names on so many lists, and still so much danger posed. By this, Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib's underwear. It's here. The suspect allegedly hid the explosives. He tried and failed to set off on an international flight to Detroit. State-of-the-art body scanners may have detected that threat, but only 19 U.S. airports now have them. Abdul Muttalib's flight came from Amsterdam, and an al-Qaeda cell in Yemen claims responsibility for that failed attack. To stop terrorists, that you have to think like terrorists and sometimes act like terrorists, to the point of blowing up airplanes for research. Check out this chilling video of explosions, test explosions, carried out by the Department of Homeland Security. The explosive that didn't go off on the Christmas Day flight bound for Michigan could have done catastrophic damage in much smaller quantities than the alleged attacker was smuggling. It's called PETN, and to see what it's capable of, CNN's Nick Robertson took a trip to the English countryside. This is a fine flying powder, so it doesn't compress down very well. What you are looking at is a bomb in the making. The white powder is the explosive PETN. Six grams of it, just a tiny fraction of what alleged Christmas Day bomber Abdul Muttalab intended to use. Um, if it goes off, I expect it to blow a hole in the plate, isn't it? At a remote farm in the English countryside, we're getting a lesson about PETN's destructive force. Ready to go? Fuse is being lit. Everything about the test is real. PETN is dangerous. Not taking any chances, because that's going to go off in just a few seconds. In a moment, we'll see the force of the explosion. People like to exaggerate this. A little thing. earlier in his lab, explosives expert Sidney Alford detonates just a few grains of PETN. Well, that was quite a big crack, though. The core chemical in PETN is hard to make or get your hands on. But although it's an explosive because it's not volatile, it's perfect for a terrorist on a long-haul flight. No, 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 it wouldn't go off accidentally. If I were carrying a pocket full, suitably packaged, of just neat powder in my pocket, it's blowing up would be the last of my my worries. Sources familiar with the investigation tell CNN the working assumption is that the alleged bomber, Abdul Matulab, may have had some 80 grams of PETN. That will probably be, if it were dry, a closer to 80 grams. Is that enough to blow a hole in an aircraft? Certainly it's enough to blow a hole. What we understand, he was wearing these explosives in the sort of groin area. Is it, can you imagine that, that you could in some way fit these and to sew them into a set of underpants and they would certainly still be you can. Yes, yes, yes. I've done it. I've done it. No problem at all. It looks just like sugar, just like salt, and it's easy to imagine how this can be stitched into clothing and hidden around the body. And that's what makes PETN such a challenge for airport security officials to detect. Alford believes the only reason lives were spared this time is because the alleged bomber's lack of training meant he couldn't detonate the bomb. And that means he probably didn't make it. On the one hand, he's been given, shall we say, a high-value substance, and on the other hand, seems to be left to his own efforts. Is it easy to make for the average person? Uh, the average person, probably not. Back at the farm, Alford's crude six-gram bomb is about to show what PETN can do in the hands of professionals. Very impressive. Some it's gone PETN through. PETN may have burnt away. This is what six grams of grams. PETN does to something that's twice yeah. as thick as an aircraft fuselage, just six grams. That's, that's pretty damaging. And that was a tiny amount, easy to, to, to sort of hide about a person. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The alleged bomber had much more than six grams, and he smuggled it on board an airliner. But he didn't have the expertise to detonate it. Nick Robertson, CNN, at a farm in Wiltshire, England.